What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I finally did it. I've been trying to make this deck competitive for a while now and I finally have the build and if you guys don't know already the deck I'm talking about is Dinomorphia. So this last week I got to go to my locals and it was a four round tournament. I think we only had like 16 players so it was a smaller tournament but we went four and oh with Dinomorphia and I'm super excited because I'm going to be showing you guys my deck profile that I played at that locals. Now if you guys do enjoy these videos Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel, but we do a full 10 videos per week. Five long videos, five short videos. You guys are going to get a little bit of everything. So I hope you guys enjoy. And with that, let's get into our 4-0 undefeated Dinomorphia deck profile. All right, let's get right into it. All right, so let's get started into the deck profile, and we're just going to start off with the Dinomorphia card. So, we're, of course, we're playing three Dinomorphia Theresia and three Dinomorphia Diplos. Now, I honestly don't like Diplos, but in a pure build of Dinomorphia, you need to be playing three because you specifically do need the name for your fusion targets. So, that's why we're playing three and three. I wouldn't change this up. I really like these ratios. Theresia, obviously, the best normal summon of your deck, gets all your combo started. So, you need to be playing three Theresia. Hey guys, editing Spanko here, and I just completely forgot to mention what my matchups were for the day. So, my round one was Kosh my round two was trap tricks my round three was sword soul and then the finals was Koshtura again so keep watching the deck profile because there is some sauce that you guys are going to see in this list but yeah it was all meta decks and we went 4-0 and then for the other dinomorphia cards we're playing three frenzy three domain so these are your fusion traps right over here you have to be maxing out on them because you really want to see them ideally you want to see one or the other with theresia because this way at least theresia can search the other one that you're missing and then you can set up like a full board with just that so ideally you want to see one or the other with this or you just see both and it feels good anyway, right? But regardless, you want to be maxing out on these. And then lastly, for the Dynamorphia traps, we're playing one Alert as well as one Sonic. These are the only ones you need. You don't need to be playing too many of the traps because really you want to make room in this deck to be playing anti-meta cards. So for that reason, I do like the one Alert as well as the one Sonic. This helps you sometimes push for a little bit more damage. It's also recursion for you. And Sonic is spell or trap negates, which is really good because sometimes if you think you're going to lose to evenly, if you think your opponent main decks evenly, this is a card that you can set up. And then at least this way, you don't lose to evenly in that sense. So this is it for the Dinomorphia cards. This is all I would really play. I wouldn't change this up at all. Moving into the hand traps and I guess the other cards, like the anti-meta cards, I would call these. We're playing three Ash, of course, the most generic one. It's just really good into everything. That's why I'm playing three Ash. Three Imperm, I think, is really good into everything as well. So the reason I like to play three and three is because really against any matchup, these are relevant. Going first, this is also really good to set as well. So I really like playing three Ash, three Imperm. And then we're playing three Book of Moon as well as one Book of Eclipse. Now, this might sound weird. The Book of Eclipse will make sense in a little bit once I show you guys some other cards that we're playing. But the three Book of Moon makes a lot of sense, in my opinion, because it's just so good into Kashtra. It's also really good into some other matchups as well. Like if your opponent goes starter into like a level two and then you can book a moon, the sprite monster, and then they kind of are stuck unless they have another level two normal summon plus another level two in their hand that they can special summon. So at this point, they have to open two level two monsters plus a starter to be able to play through the book of moons, which is really nice. And the book of eclipse, the only reason I played a one is because I don't actually like sitting on eclipse. The thing I like about book of moon is you can go first or second with book of moon. You can set the book of moon and it's still really relevant even if you're going first because it's just another form of disruption. With eclipse, yes it's a form of disruption but the thing with eclipse is it books your monsters as well now you might be able to say like oh you can play around that if you set like three traps you can wait to use the book of eclipse and then use your traps to summon your fusion monsters but the thing is it's like there's a lot of situations where if you're setting this up you might need to get a fusion monster on the board or in turns two turns three you have an eclipse and then now you're giving up your own monsters to activate eclipse which is just honestly not that powerful so i like playing the three book of moon and the one eclipse and you guys are going to see why we're playing one later it actually makes a lot of sense but that's it for the board breaker cards over here i don't think i would change these up at all i really really like these ratios so then for the consistency pieces, we are playing, of course, three Fossil Dig because your Theresias are dinos, all your monsters are dinos. So Fossil Dig is really nice in that sense. You guys might notice also we're not playing Miscellaneousaurus. We don't need it. It's not a good card in this deck. You don't need to be playing it. But three Fossil Dig, you want to get the Theresia as fast as possible. We're only playing one Prosperity because I only have the one. I'm sorry, guys. You, you guys definitely should be playing three Prosperity. But instead of three, I played two TTTs. I only have the one Prosperity, like I said earlier. If I had three, then I'd be playing three Prosperity here. But I like the two TTTs. This wasn't actually too bad for me either. It comes up a lot. Um, uh, there's a card in the extra deck that I wish I was playing that I'm not playing that this card makes really, really powerful. So I'll talk about that when I get into the extra deck. But ideally, you want to be playing three pros. It wasn't a big issue. I didn't really find that it was an issue. Then we're playing one Called by the Grave as well as two Cross Out Designator. Now, this is the card that I kind of want to talk about. Called by the Grave, of course, is really powerful because everyone's on Ash and Ash kind of ruins your traps because all of them send from the deck so they can all be Ashed. But paying your life points is cost. So essentially, you end up with 4,000 life points and no Fusion Monster on the board. So that's why I like playing the Called by. Cross Out, of course, 
Eclipse is really good into Ash, but that's also another reason why we're playing Book of Eclipse. Now, if we look back here, a lot of these cards that I'm showing you guys are cards that everyone is playing this format. Eclipse, everyone's on. Book of Moon, you can find people on. Maybe a little bit less likely, but definitely you can find people on Book of Moon Eclipse for sure. Imperm, everyone is on. If they're trying to break your board with Imperm, if they want to break your Rexdrum, or if they want to stop your Theresia with Imperm, Crossout is good for that. And then same thing with Ash over here, right? So you're always going to have protection, which is really nice. And I found that it was really important to do this because in testing, a lot of the time, if my opponent did have a single hand trap, sometimes it was just a single Ash, I wasn't able to play. So Crossout is really good for that reason. It's really good to help your opponent not break your boards because again, if you're setting up boards and then you set the cross out and then your opponent has like a book of eclipse or something to break your board, the cross out is protecting you regardless. So that's why I actually really like the two cross outs. I, I wouldn't change this at all. I love this actually in the main deck. I really, really loved it. And then we're playing the one Harpy's Feather Duster as well, which technically you can cross out the Harpy's Feather Duster as well. You can also cross out Called by the Grave if your opponent is activating a Called by the Grave on an Ash that you need to resolve. So essentially if they activate a card and they really need to resolve that card and you want to Ash it, let's say against Brand Infusion, right? And you go Ash against Brand Infusion and they go Called by the Grave to protect it. Cross out Designator can sometimes call the Called by the Grave. So there's just so many different things that Crossout can hit, which I really, really like. Harpy's Feather Duster is also one of those cards. So again, that's why I just really like these ratios. I wouldn't change it up at all because I, I really love these. Lastly, you guys might be wondering, oh, Spanko, you're playing a trap-based deck and not playing traps. Okay, we're playing a few traps here. We're playing three Solemn Judgment as well as three Goes in Match. I think these are just the best ones to be playing. All your monsters are dark. You can play Rivalry, of course, as well. I'm playing Rivalry in the side deck, but all your monsters are dark. All the cards you're going to go into the extra deck are pretty much dark. So Goes in Match is really good. It's really good into a lot of different matchups. And Judgment, of course, to protect you from like pretty much anything. So I really like these six. Judgment kind of sucks going second, but I still think you have to be playing it because just because it's so powerful. So that rounds out the main deck. It's a 40-card main deck. So I actually want to show you guys the side deck here first before I show you guys the extra deck because a lot of the cards that I'm playing in my extra deck are going to make sense when you guys see the side deck. And the first card I'm going to be showing you guys is the Spanko Spice. It's the Spanko Sauce. It's just so important. And that is three Ghost Reaper and Wooden Cherries. Oh my god, everyone, every time I resolve this was kind of like, what is going on here? This card is absolutely insane. You call Shangri-La against Kostura. You can call Mirror Jade. You can call Gigantic Sprite. This card is absolutely insane. I didn't play a Mirror Match, but in theory, if you play a Mirror Match, it's pretty good as well but yeah you're never really gonna see a mirror match this card is absolutely insane every time i resolved i was winning the game this card is just so nuts so i really like playing three of this it's really good going second of course and then just more cards going second three nibiru we're playing three evenly matched of course just to help break more boards i'm actually playing the one cross out designator in the side deck to make three in the main deck and the side deck and the reason for that is because d barrier is a card that comes in a lot when you're forced to go second let's say you win game one people are going to be siding this in against you so cross out is really good because you can cross out the d barrier the reason i'm playing two d barrier is because because essentially if I'm going up against Branded or even Koshtar sometimes, if I know I'm going first, I'll side out some of the go second cards. And then what I'll do is I'll set the D barriers. And then against Koshtar, of course, you can call Ixies. But against uh, Branded, you can call Fusion. And you guys might be wondering, oh, but Spanko, you can't Fusion summon them. That's fine. If you're just activating this and your opponent just stops playing the game, then you're fine. Because even if you just have a Therese on the board, as soon as it comes back to you, you just activate your Fusion traps and then you can set up a big board and then try to push for a lot of damage. So this just helps you so that your opponent can't actually play the turn. And then lastly, we're playing three rivalry. I didn't like this card actually. I didn't side it in at all. It didn't really come up. Or actually, when I did side it in, I think I said it in a couple times, but I never actually saw it. This card I wish was something else. And the card that I wish this was was like Dark Hole. Dark Hole, I think, is just really good. And again, this deck does struggle going second, being a trap based deck. Yes, you're playing so many hand traps and so many board breakers, but at the end of the day, your big boss monsters are summoned using trap cards. So sometimes I just wish I had board breakers to just like, you know, clear my opponent's board so I could survive a couple more turns and then I could set up my own boards, right? So this card was okay. Okay, in theory, it's really good because all your monsters are dino as well. So it's not bad, but it's just kind of one of those things where I never really saw it coming up. So yeah, maybe this, maybe a dark hole instead here, but I, I I don't mind this. In theory, it's not bad. It just never really came up at this locals. But yeah, this is it for the 15 card side deck. I really like all of these. These are the three cards that maybe can be swapped. So lastly, the extra deck over here, it's pretty standard. I don't think there's much to talk about. You're playing three Rexstrom, the boss monster of your deck. If you're setting this card up with at least any other trap, you're pretty much winning the duel because it's really hard to out this card, especially when you're setting up protection with it. So that's why I really like three Rexstrom. We're playing three Katrina, of course, as well. You have to be playing three and three because you don't want to get these ripped out of your extra deck by Kostra players. So that's why we're playing three and three. We're only playing two of the Stealth Burgia though. Stealth Burgia is only really important to help you get into your Rexstrom. And so that's why we're only just playing the two. I think this is fine. Even if one gets ripped 
ripped out, you only ever really need one. So that's why I just like playing the two. And then we're playing two Dolka as well as two Logia. These cards are obviously really good because they're dino monsters in your main deck. So you can make Logia and Dolka sometimes, which is really nice. I, I only went into, I think, Dolka once the whole tournament, but it's not bad when you do go into it. And then lastly, for the three cards, we are playing one Gigantic Sprite, one Shangri-La, as well as one Mirror Jade. These are the three cards that are kind of just Cherry's targets. Now, I will say there's one thing that I wanted to change. So because I'm playing TTT specifically, I wish this card, instead of being a Gigantic Sprite, was actually something like an Arise Heart. And the reason I say that is because if you're playing TTT, a lot of the time you can just take your opponent's Stronger Law after they activate its effect, and then you can make your Arise Heart on top of it, which is really nice. So sometimes I wish that this Sprite was actually an Arise Heart because it would have been really nice for me. It never really came up where it mattered because, I mean, I won anyways regardless, to be honest with you, right? So it's one of those things where it's like, it didn't make that that much of a difference, but it would have been really nice to have the Arise Heart just because I can go TTT rather than the draw two effect. I can just take the Shangri La and then summon a nice 3000 beat stick on my side of the board, right? So at the end of the day, this was fine for me. And I think Gigantic Sprite to hit off of Cherries is not bad either. You guys can test it out for yourselves. I played Gigantic Sprite though, it was fine. But again, this card was just another option that I might want to play in the future. But this extra deck here is really, really powerful. I don't think like this stuff, I wouldn't change at all. It's really just this stuff. And for today's format with Cherries, I thought these were really good. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That was my 4-0 undefeated deck profile with Dinomorphia. Now this deck, again, I showed you guys at the end of the video some changes that I would make. But again, it's so hard to say that I want to make these changes when you go 4-0, right? And now it was a smaller sample size, but I still think some of these changes can be put in and you guys can kind of figure it out. And I'm honestly going to be working on figuring out exactly how these changes are going to go. But I love this deck. 4-0 undefeated, bro. Like I was so excited to play this deck and actually be able to build it and win with it for you guys so i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you guys did make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu Gi Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel but we do a full 10 videos per week also we're on the road to 10,000 subscribers let's make it happen i believe in the spanko squad so thank you guys all for watching and with that spanko sign it out peace